composing gloves here and this is another video in the sound and synth basics this is a super mega important one you've made it through the last few ones and this is one where i do build on concepts so if you've skipped to this one you may want to go back and watch the other ones if you get lost in this one you probably won't if you know if you know some jazz but who knows maybe you will we're going to talk about volume envelopes in particular so what is an envelope an envelope is a thing that maps some parameter over time and you might be saying well geez that is like such a confusing definition uh so here i have an envelope this is an envelope you see it even says envelope and we're covering this now because you're going to run into volume envelopes volume follower envelopes you're going to run into envelope generators you're just going to run into envelopes everywhere they're like they're everywhere man and we're going to specifically talk about volume envelopes because it ties in with what we're talking about with waveforms in the previous video so specifically volume envelopes, but a few general things to note. Here's an envelope and we have these points and we have all these different settings. These are very common settings. Sometimes you'll hear envelopes referred to as ADSR envelopes. Sometimes they'll include an H in that acronym. So here we have these different settings and ADSR stands for attack to K sustained release. And what is that? Well, if we look back at our waveform example, let me open up that Edison. So here's, here's a good example of, of a complex waveform and detached. Okay. So we see here, let's just look at this section right here. I wonder if I can get middle ground here. Nope. Okay. So let's just look at this section right here. This kick section right here. We see that if we ignore all this stuff on this side and all this stuff on this side, we have this sudden rise in volume this compression refraction is all of a sudden like bang we're freaking compressing and this is called the attack phase this one has an extraordinarily fast attack phase if we were to contrast that to this over here you see that we start off at zero and then it very slowly gets louder this is a mega slow attack phase maybe this one did drugs and is is not as awake as the other as the kick over there so we have a very slow rise in volume and then we have and in this case it goes on to a song but then and so let's go over here let's get an example of a decay so here we have our very fast attack and so it's not like that other guy that did drugs over here the, the kicks on top of things that's why it's the star in the song so then we see we have this uh general decay in volume it goes woo it goes down it's not it's not uh living up after that had its moment maybe this one did drugs too i don't know maybe it all did drugs so we have our attack and then the decay in volume because of that decay that's just what it's called so when your volume decreases down to essentially zero in our kick here we could see we have our attack bang and then we go down a, just a little bit in volume this is called the sustain phase so sustain is defined by this periodic waveform you see here and it, it generally most sounds will typically have a pretty complicated attack with a whole bunch of crazy junk going on in there this is referred to as the chiff uh in sample terminology and then you reach this sustain part here where it's a periodic waveform and we have our you know compression refraction all that jazz happening in a much more predictable fashion making this easier to synthesize far easier to synthesize than this and then we have a release so you see it decreases in volume and it goes out so that's what this is mapping so here we can manipulate this we can change the length of the attack make it uh maybe more drugs less drugs and then we have hold so a hold is i didn't talk about hold you're going to run into occasionally other options as well this is like basic volume envelopes it's important to keep in mind and just be conscious of moving forward as we get into more advanced envelopes but you see here we have this here hold where it reaches our attack but then it like hangs out over there it hasn't it hasn't gotten its hangover yet and gone on its uh decay so it's holding right here and sometimes it'll be referred to as the sustain as the sustain is a bit different than hold hold is the length sustain controls the volume when it okay anyways so hold backing up hold is this section right here so you reach your attack and how long you stay at that maximum attack value is your hold if we were to change our hold value uh change it you'll see how long we stay there 
changes. Then you have your decay. So after you've done your drugs, uh, you have your decay. And it goes down. And you see we have a rather substantial. It actually has a second rise in this one. But we're not going to talk about this. This should just be considered another like attack sort of type thing. Uh, multiple sustained values over a waveform. Anyways, we have our, our hold. Our hold is passed. And then we start to experience our sustain. So we'll de decrease a little bit. So we have attack, hold, and then we'll decrease a little bit. And then it will like hang out at a, at a particular volume. Maybe it's not got its hangover quite yet, but it's, it's done. It's got off its high. So uh, as you see, when we manipulate this, this is called our decay. And so it decays out. And then we'll reach a point called the sustain where the sound will actually just stay there indefinitely until it receives a release call. So it will decrease in value, stay at this release, uh, this sustain value, and then when it receives a release call, it will release and go to zero, and that's when the cops show up and take everyone to jail. So here's our attack, and then we have our hold, and then we have our decay, and then we have our sustain release. And so hopefully you get an idea of what volume envelopes can offer you. So you might be saying, this is all fine, dandy, and great, and super duper, but I'm still confused. Uh, I want some examples. And so, oh man, do man, bro. I'm all about that example life. So let's talk about that. So let's go over here to Massive. And I choose Massive just because it's super nice. I have a whole series on Massive. If you have no clue what the crap you're doing with Massive and you're like, I bought this thing that everyone said was going to be great, but I don't know what I'm doing. Go watch that series. It will teach you. It's a uh, Massive from the ground up. So I happen to know that Modulator 4 controls this. So I have a square wave to start off. We haven't talked about square waves, so I'm going to be nice and use a sine wave. So here we have a sine wave, and it is following the dictations of my envelope. My envelope's like a dictator, and it tells this how to behave. It says, do this, and then it does it. So if we were to change my attack to something much more, as you see, my graph here changes when I move these knobs. This is not, oh, you can click and drag. I have forgotten that. I'm so used to just moving the knobs now because you're going to notice something in sound design. When you know what the knobs do, Moving up and touching the graphic is oftentimes less accurate than, well, it is. It's always less accurate than moving the knobs and getting a really specific value. So if you're going for something really specific and you're used to doing that, you'll generally reach for knobs. If you're, you know, something new people do is they'll just click on the picture because they like pictures. Pictures are more, they communicate more information to them. They think there's more information in the picture, so they'll go there first. So just so you know, when you're watching people do things, people who reach for knobs, and I'm not saying like I'm an expert, I'll go for the uh, I'll go for the graphics sometimes, just the same as anyone if I'm going for something general. But when you want to get specific like this, they'll go for the knobs because it's hard to accomplish really specific setups. Like say I want a very particular kind of envelope, it's gonna be. Anyways, you get the idea. So. I'm just pointing just point out stuff. They have this extra morph option here. Go watch the Massive series if you want to know what this does because this is specific to Massive. In general, as a volume envelope, though, here we have it. So we have our decays. You see, we, we can control that. This They have two levels knobs here. So they were not super cool, and they didn't label this one hold, and they didn't label this one um sustain essentially that's all that there is about that and then our release is way over here because we have this weird morph thing in the middle forget about that jazz and then you'll also see this in a lot of envelopes you see this delay this is just like nothing happens for this some some amount of time and then bang it happens so we have our attack right here so if we play it now it happens fast if we give it some drugs you see it, it takes a while to get going it's like Maybe it's maybe it's in school giving getting a written assignment and that's the research paper. I don't know. So here we have that. Now we have our our level of our attack. Oh, they don't have a hold option in this envelope. Lo siento. So you see we we can only get as loud as right here for our attack. And so we're gonna peek out on our attack. Boom. And then we have our decay which controls how long, as you can see, it shrinks here. You might be saying, why isn't this going up and down? Well, this controls the length of decay. If you want it to decay a lot, you do this. So it's going to reach this value, go down by some amount. When it reaches this value, now if you're familiar, FM8 has like, these crazy envelopes that allow you to do a whole bunch more, and a number of other VSTs do. I choose this one specifically because 
it's limited, but it's super intuitive. Like I don't feel limited by it. And they give you these extra options here, which you can essentially do an FM8 as well in a much more detailed fashion. So anyways, we reach this. Let's say we wanted to make a pluck. We could just have it decay out to zero right off of our um, decay. And we could control the length of that pluck using our decay. Now our level controls the sustain value as well. So as it decays out, it will reach our sustain and we'll just hang out at this value until we tell it to we let go of the note and then it will receive a signal that says oh crap release and then it will release by however long we tell it to release as you can see so i hit the note let go of the note and big long release really long release and you see it like never wants to end really short release it almost clicks this is so something when you're dealing with graphics don't become attached to the graphics uh too much like use them but be wary that your ear is the final judge not the stupid picture so if it looks funny but it sounds fine then it's fine uh that's that and then we can also do a level so if you want it to sustain out on dubstep this is the dubstep envelope and this is the laser envelope because for pitch if you want to control pitch with an envelope but we haven't talked about that so anyways that is volume i just want you to get this idea of volume and the neat thing you might be saying well there's there's more oh there's always more um the neat thing is that you will actually get plugins that will generate envelopes for you so instead of you coming in here and creating this envelope and messing with all these settings you will get one that just automatically generates one an example of this is right here in the sampler so if i play this we can actually control the decay they don't tell you they just say in and out right here but you can actually control this and it's just manipulating an envelope that it generated for you so a lot of plugins will just generate an envelope and I happen to love this about it. It's sort of like a compressor, but it's giving you some unusual control and options. So here we have our attack, essentially. But it also manipulates our uh, attack point value. It's kind of com combined a few knobs into one. But I really dig it. Uh, can you automate these? You cannot. I have wanted to in the past. And... You can't. So if you want to make it seem like an automation, you're going to have to open up multiple layers and move through them. But anyways, that is ADSR envelope in a nutshell. <laughs> Oop. That was weird. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.